Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. We are watching Band of Brothers, episode seven, The Breaking Point. Let's get into this thing. My friends, my men being killed. It's winter as I bet. It doesn't take too many days of that and you change dramatically. Mm -hmm. You'd be able to fire some crazy thing and shoot at you. Everywhere you would look, you would see dead people, you know. Hours, theirs, then civilians besides animals. Death was all over. Yeah. I withstood it well, but I had a lot of trouble in later life. <gasps> Those events would come back. Mm -hmm. And you never forget them. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you would never forget it. You'd never forget what you'd see. Oh, my gosh, that sweet man. How am I going to even watch the documentary, you guys? Oh no, I feel like I'm going to be a waterworks already today. It's it's coming. Just seeing that last episode, oh my gosh. I just could never imagine. I'm going to try to stay strong. I'm really going to try to stay strong. These guys are my inspo. Oh man, I forgot to put my poppy on. It's almost Remembrance Day. Directed by David Frankel, Band of Brothers, Part 7, The Breaking Point, January 2nd, 1945, Ardennes Forest, Belgium. After holding the line at Bastogne, Easy Company was once again called on to help push the Germans back through the bulge. Okay. I need you get right there. Hey, take it easy. Stop there. crying, Malarker. I'll nail it to your head. <laughs> Garnier, move him out. Let's go. Yes, sir. I was glad to be out of my foxhole and moving again, even if only to get warm. Oh, it's his episode, isn't it? E Company was sent to clear the Bois Jack, the woods near the town of Foy. Okay. During that 1,000 yard attack through the woods, we encountered sporadic German machine gun fire and had a couple of casualties, but for the most part, met little resistance. Oh, so young. No! Oh, that scared me. Hubler's running with the German officer on horseback was the most dramatic moment of the day. Oh no! Oh, yeah, I did get him in the head. Thank you. Hubler had been talking about getting a Luger since Normandy. That's what I thought. I was gonna say Luger, but for some reason I thought that was the knife. Outstanding accuracy on my part, if I do say so myself. Come on, it took you a couple shots. <laughs> Hell shifty, I think maybe I could have even given you a run for your money, right? That germ, what do you think it was doing? Probably a little recon. What happened, the horse? Hope it's okay. Me too. I hope the horse is okay. Oh, you're a good shot, Hope. Just glad you're on our side. Thanks, Lee. Thanks for the help. You got a shifty. Where's Dyke? He's uh, he's around. But I haven't seen him all day. Two women. Who? Brown and Stevens. God damn it. Now where's Dyke? Where the hell is he? Where the hell does he ever go? I don't know, but I wish you'd stay the hell there. Shutting up, Sarge. Okay. One man, maybe a sniper. That was no rifle. Oh, Jesus, it's who be shot. He shot himself. Oh, did he shoot himself with the Luger? The most dramatic of the day. What happened? Just what, what the hell are you doing with a loaded gun in your pants? Shit, fuck, I wasn't touching it or nothing. Okay. You've been talking about a Luger. I wasn't touching it, I swear. Medic! I don't look who's fine. It's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Come on, Hoover. It's all right. Hurts like a son of a It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. That was a great shot, really. Come on, Hoover. Jump out of plane. You're tough, man. You're tough. Come on. Still shivering. Hold on tight. Let's get ready to move. Take it easy. No, 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 no. <gasps> no. He was wearing so many clothes we couldn't tell how bad he was bleeding. <sighs> Bullet cut the main artery in his leg, sir. Cut that main artery in the leg, that's, that's it. Yes, sir. Well, I'm gonna uh, go back and make sure the boys are all dug in, sir. 
I can't believe that happened to him. Where's Dyke? <gasps> oh, I just would have expected to get this kind of news from him. Well, I was, uh, I was there, sir. He was so unlucky. That's so unlucky. How did that happen to him? Why? Where's Dyke? I probably heard that question a thousand times. There were long stretches where we didn't know where Lieutenant Dyke was. He disappeared. But Lieutenant Dyke was supposed to be leading the company. Winters was a CEO we could all respect. Moose Heiliger probably would have done a good job. Then came Norman Dyke. He was a bad leader because he made no decisions. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah. What's the information you want us to go for? Oh, but I'll clarify that with you at a later time. This episode is already shot really cool. It's got a really interesting tone to it. Yeah, what? what? How do you not lead these guys? Dyke was a favorite of somebody at Division. He'd been sent down to E Company to get some combat experience. Oh. Sometimes we got the feeling E Company was an annoyance to him before he could continue his march up the ladder. Hmm. Yeah, where does he go? If you ask me, I'm glad Lieutenant Dyke's never around. Doing all right now, right? And in that town are these guys. And these guys are called Germans. And these Germans got tanks. I know. And who they're gonna want? They're going knocking on a goddamn door. I know, Bill. Got to all this with a CO who's got his head so far his fucking ass that lump in his throat is his goddamn nose. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a replacement officer coming in here, getting thrown in with a group of guys who've known each other for what? Yeah, it'd be the hard one to come in. Hope to gain the respect of the toughest, most professional, most dedicated sons of bitches in the entire ETO. It'd be so hard to come in. Yeah, I'd have to march off to Berlin and back with Hitler's mustache or something. <laughs> you guys don't worry about Dyke. We all do our jobs, everything will be fine. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. I believed any of that. But as company first sergeant, it was my job. <laughs> yeah. But to protect the integrity of the company. You're good at that, too. But does he go, like, hide or something? Like, where does he go? He's not going to let me replace him just because I got a bad feeling about him. Who'd I put in his place? Are you going to put Lipton? I'm sure as hell not going to make him company CEO, and I don't even want him as a platoon leader. Yeah, I really like how this is a shot. Not that it matters anyway, because I can't get rid of Dyke. <laughs> we all know who you'd like to have running easy. Trouble is, it's not your job anymore, Dick. Cool. They look so cold. So cold. We all agreed Buck Compton would have been the best choice to run easy. Okay. Buck wasn't the same soldier he'd been before he got shot in Holland. Mmm. And don't you two do something stupid like that, all right? I try not to, Buck. I mean it. It's too much goddamn time shaping you into something useful. <laughs> <laughs> crazy get yourself knocked out of this thing i know i know you'll kill me even if you're dead i'll still kill you <laughs> i love garnier's laugh he's like his mouth just opens so wide and he's like ah, 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 ah. <laughs> slap him you know, ever since he got shot in holland he's all wound up like a spring hey 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 he's mm. i was being in that hospital i've been there okay it ain't pretty fine. The hospital would be so hard. It's so hard in a different way than being on the battlefield. Don't do anything stupid. Who the hell is he talking to? A bunch of morons who volunteer to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Can you get any more stupid than that? Probably not. <laughs> I swam across the Niagara once. I swear. <laughs> I didn't go over the falls, George. I swam across the river. Tell you that current is damn strong. I bet. Two miles downstream before uh -huh. I got across, but I got across. Yeah, rivers are dangerous, especially when they have so much force. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that shot's creep creeping me out a little bit. I heard about Hubler. Oh. Oh, what made you decide to join the paratroopers? about paratroopers in life magazine said if you want to make it as a paratrooper you had to be the best i wanted to fight with the best sir where are you from sir? captain nixon sir 
what? <laughs> he hates being woken up. Morning. Is winter shaving? Huh, dice being transferred? No, I can't help you with that. Pluck one officer from each regiment, send it back to the States on a 30-day furlough. Whoa. Turns out I've been plucked. <gasps> Doesn't, I'm not going. <laughs> I've already seen the States. I grew up there, that's why I came to Europe. But I'm sure we can find an officer somewhere in this battalion who could use a long trip home. Congratulations, Lieutenant Peacock. Would you be jealous? But then wouldn't it be so hard to have to come back? It really means a lot, you know? Oh, get out of here. <laughs> At least we're happy for him. Hip, hip, hooray. To come by here, y'all remember to smile for the camera. Got to keep the morale up for them folks back home. All right, Nix, what do they got waiting for us in Foy? At least one company from the 10th Panzer Grenadiers. They've also got uh, at least 188, although we haven't been able to spot it yet. Hmm. How about armor? As of last night, three Tigers. How do I feel about being rescued by Patton? We didn't need to be fucking rescued by Patton. Got that? <sighs> Sorry about what? Patton? I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I'd really like to head back with the fellas, sir. All right, then go. A little smile from Winters. Stayed stationed for three days, and everybody was glad to have him back, especially Bill Garnier. Hmm. Hey, Joe. Hey, Bill. Good to see you, pal. You too. <laughs> A lot of you guys been injured? It's called wounded, Peanut. Feels so bad for the replacements. Almost every single one of these guys been hit at least once. You'll find out, son. A bull. Oh. Has never been hit. You're one lucky <gasps> bastard. They... Knock on wood. Yeah, kind of an easy company tradition getting shot in the ass. <laughs> one chunk in the face. Another chunk almost took out his nuts. Yeah, what are those nuts like? Doing fine, Bill. <laughs> Thank God his nuts were okay. Two men remained in the Bois Jack attached to D Company to hold the main line. Of oh, is that Fassbender right there? Yeah. Lieutenant Ronald Spears was one of the platoon leaders in D Company. He was already a legend. Hmm. He shot 20 POWs. What are you men doing out here? We're watching the line, sir. You might want to reinforce your cover. Oh, well, actually, sir, Lieutenant Dykes are not even to bother. I don't forget what I said. Oh, anyone care for smoke? <laughs> we returned to our old position in the woods overlooking Foy. Fucking kidding me! One of those first battalion fuckers took a dump in my foxhole! <gasps> I don't think they wanted to spend much time above ground. <laughs> The Germans have been shelling our old position. That got our attention. Looking across the field at Foy, I could see enemy troops. Wow, they have white for camouflage in this snow. Maybe they got any target. No, they're just waiting. For what? For us to reoccupy the position. It's our job to hold the line here. We're not gonna fall back. Fine. This guy does nothing. Incoming! Take cover! Oh no. The box oh. oh man, they're getting hammered. All I could think about was the 4th of July when I was a kid. He's like laughing. What I saw that day was the most awesome and terrifying display of firepower I'd ever seen in my life. Uh, oh. No. It was like... Crowds are trying to draw us out in the open. Stay in your foxholes. I gotta get up. <gasps> oh. I gotta get up. <laughs> I need my helmet. Yeah, I think that's Joe. <laughs> oh, stay down! Help anyone there? Oh my gosh. Come on, buddy. Oh. You said you get back in state before me. Come on, Joe, I got you. And come on! <gasps> come on, come on! Hold on, I'll be there, I'll get out! During the second barrage, I wasn't laughing anymore. <sighs> Organized here. I'm gonna go for help. What 
the fuck? Exactly. <laughs> Alec! <laughs> I got to do to get killed around here. Oh my god, Bill. <laughs> hey, got old guy needed this time. I can't freaking believe it. Yo, I told you I beat you back to the States. <laughs> They're so freaking tough, these guys. Luz, how's Buck? He's fine. <laughs> but I know something happened to him when he saw a Toy and Garnier on the ground. I didn't want to believe it. Buck was a great combat leader. Oh, Buck. Couldn't take seeing his friends Toy and Garnier all torn up like that. Nope. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine. You were stuck with Dyke. Where does he go? And I'm gonna go for help. <laughs> Great impression of Dyke. You think so? I thought it was a little off. <laughs> Second, don't do it anymore. Uh. No. smoke <gasps> the shell that hit the foxhole Luz and I were in was a dud oh my god Malarkey's best friends in the company had been comped in muck and Pankala. in less than a week he'd seen two of them die later that day we were back in our old position overlooking Foy we were all worried about Malarkey his freaking rosary <sighs> bring a Luger home for your kid brother yeah why don't you give him that Captain Winters was wondering if he wanted to go back to battalion and uh, work as his runner for a few days. Tell him thanks. I'm, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> All Lipton MVP man. I saw a soldier try to dig a foxhole with his bare hands. Oh. Got hey. him out of there quickly. Not for his sake, but for ours. Fear is poison in combat. It would be so hard. Keep your morality and your mentality up and your mental health. Buck was never the same after seeing Toy and Garnier get hit that day. I guess he just needed some time away from it all. Marked the low point in the war for many of the men in E Company. Even then, very few actually broke. I was afraid the men would lose focus, suffer a drop in morale. And that was dangerous, especially in combat. Now it was time for the inevitable assault on Foy itself. Frankly, I was dreading it. But now I was beginning to wonder if any of us were going to make it through at all. <sighs> e Company would lead the attack. E Company still did not have a leader. Aren't you the leader? The night before the attack, I did something as first sergeant I would never have imagined myself doing. Is he going to ask? On the other hand, I have no confidence in our CO, sir. <gasps> Lieutenant Dyke is an empty uniform, Captain. I gotta tell you, sir, I think he's gonna get a lot of easy company men killed. He's right. Just tell him it like it is. Come on, Winters. What is Winters gonna do? What courage to go up and say that? There was nothing Winters could do. Damn. Couldn't very well remove a company CO, especially a well-connected one. There's very little cover, so you gotta move quickly. Huh. Third Battalion, we're coming from the east. You gotta move in there fast. Get in there before they can bring their mortars and artillery down on you. Clear. I'm relying on you. Okay. Let's go! Keep it moving! Now. Lieutenant, what's the plan? Captain Winner! You take your men on a flanking mission around the village and attack it from the rear! We cannot stay here! 
We will provide suppressing fire! Oh my gosh, his winter is just... Tell the battalion commander, now get back here! Oh, he... I understand your attachment to Easy Company, but... Spurs, get yourself over here! Get out there and relieve Dyke and take that attack on in! <sighs> oh my god, Spears. I'm taking over. Precision Lipton! Pinned down by a sniper! M V P man Lipton. When it's gone, I want first to go straight in. Forget going around. Everybody else follow me. Yes, sir. Oh my God! My God, we have freaking people leading these men. Whoa. First, the Germans didn't shoot at it. I think they couldn't quite believe what they were seeing. I can't believe what I'm seeing. The astounding thing was that after he hooked up with Eye Company, he came back. <sighs> I literally, I just, <laughs> like, honest to God, like, I. <sighs> we took over 100 German prisoners. I'm in shock. Where is he? I can't see him. Don't miss Shifty. <gasps> Shifty's got a freaking bullseye shot. There would have been more if it hadn't been for Shifty Powers. Beautiful wound, Lip. You true about Dyke? Yeah. It was a great relief to have done it. Two days later, we took Noville, and after that, Rashawn. Wow. That was so intense. It was the first time we'd spent a night indoors in a month. Wow. The sisters there brought in their choir to sing for us. It was heaven. So beautiful. The mood of the men was relaxed. Hitler had launched a counteroffensive in Alsace, the town of Hagenau, to help hold the line. But at least for that night, we didn't know it yet. It's a little bit of peace for you guys after everything you've been through. We'd come into Belgium with 121 men and officers. That's 145 total. We were going out with 63. Garnier was badly wounded and Hubler died accidentally. Joe Toy had lost his leg. Oh. Well, I better get back to the battalion before they disappear. You want to ask me, don't you? You want to know if they're true or not, the stories about me? They're just glad to have you as our CEO. Oh, from what I've heard, they've always had one. I've been told there's always been one man they could count on. <sighs> Kept the men focused, gave them direction. You don't have any idea who I'm talking about, do you? No, sir. Hell, it was you for a sergeant. Ever since Winter's made battalion, you've been the leader of Easy Company. You should get the official nod in a few days. Congratulations, Lieutenant. I am d absolutely destroyed today. Oh my god. Lipton! Yeah, thanks for crapping in our foxholes. <laughs> Enjoy the walk, boys! <laughs> he really picked up smoking. <laughs> I don't blame him. Oh gosh. Beyond the wounded and killed, every man at Veston suffered. Men unhit by shrapnel or bullets were nevertheless casualties. Stephen E. Ambrose. Yeah. He said it. I'm not sure that anybody who lived through that one hasn't carried with him in some hidden ways the scars. Perhaps that is the factor that keeps easy men bonded so unusually close together. Captain Richard Winters. Wow. Wow. 
Oh my gosh. I even went light on the makeup today because I was like, it's going to get hard, right? Like it's going to get even harder. I am absolutely wrecked. The stories of these men and what they went through, what words could I say to even compare or try to describe it. I can't, I cannot, and I will not try. But what I will say is that the storytelling of this show has been absolutely incredible. The POV of Lipton was amazing. I love the narration. I love how they shot this episode no matter how hard or dark or weird that may sound, but these are important stories. He is the MVP. He was absolutely critical in this. What a man, as well as all these other men. How hard was that to see? My favorite character, um, Garnier, just absolutely destroyed. What a sight. I don't blame Buck. I don't blame anyone. These men can do whatever they want in their lives after this war. I don't care because they are absolute true heroes. I continue to be blown away by these this story and I'm um, so thankful. I know why everybody loves this series. <laughs> I, I feel like I have to cry this one out. I have to cry this one out. This was a hard episode. They're all freaking hard, but like that was just unfathomable, unbelievable. I kept thinking like, how are they safe in foxholes? I kept thinking that and then they got blown up. People that you grow so close to, I couldn't imagine seeing them injured. Thank you guys so much for being here. I am so thankful for you guys watching my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao. Take care of yourselves, all right?